Section 7.1.37. Michael went to the driving range with his range finder and hit 75 golf balls with his pitching wedge and measured the distance each ball traveled in yards. The accompanying table shows this data. So what we want to do, we're going to complete parts A and B. So the first part, it says, use technology to construct a relative frequency histogram, comment on the shape of the distribution, and then draw a normal density function on the relative frequency histogram. So we're going to first going to open up this data into StatCrunch. Let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll close that part out. So here's our data in StatCrunch. And what we want to do is we want to create a relative frequency histogram. So the first thing we need to do is we can see that there's an error in how this data is pulled in. So we're going to go ahead and copy the title and put the drive at the top here and then copy distance and put that at the top here. And then we're going to highlight the row, come over here to edit, and then we're going to go to rows and then delete that first row. And then we're going to select compute. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to create a relative frequency histogram of the column of distance. So we're going to go to graph and then select histogram. We're going to select distance and then go to relative frequency. And then we're going to go ahead and select compute. So there is our histogram. Okay, so if we look at our histogram for part A, it doesn't match. Um, if we look at part C, it also does not match. Now, if we look at part B and D, we can see that it has the same shape, but we need to make sure that we look at the y-axis for the relative frequency. The relative frequency for here goes from 0 to 0.32, which is what we want. Here it goes from 0 to 25, which is not what we want. So that means we're going to go ahead and select B. And so therefore, there is our histogram. And now, the next question we want to ask ourselves is, comment on the shape of the distribution. So what we want to say is that the shape of the distribution is approximately normal because all the data in the middle of the histogram is in the middle of the data. So we're going to select B and the shape of the distribution is approximately normal. Okay, now the next question is you want to draw a normal density function on the relative frequency histogram. So what we want to do is we're going to go back to StatCrunch. Okay, and then with our data, Okay, I'm going to expand this just a little bit more so we can use this information better here. What we want to do is we want to find what is the, uh, the mean and the standard deviation of the column that represents distance. So we're going to go to stat, summary stats, and go to columns. And then we're going to select distance and then find the mean and the standard deviation. And then we're going to select compute. Okay, so now we know what the mean is and what the standard deviation is. Now we're going to come back here in our histogram and then we're going to go ahead and then go to options and select edit. And then what we want to do um, is that we want to overlay the distribution. Okay. And so by overlaying it is we want to then add a normal curve. And that normal curve is going to have the mean that we have, which is 99.92. And then the standard deviation to three decimal places is 1.872. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and select compute. And so therefore, we can see that this now curve is now drawn on the histogram. And you can see what our mean is and what our standard deviation is. So now if we compare that to our results, okay, we see that B and D are the ones that have those bell curves. But again, take a look at the y-axis, and we can see that the y-axis has the relative frequencies from 0 to 0 0.32 on part C. So selecting part C, there's our answer. And the last question says, do you think the normal density function accurately describes the distance Michael hits with the pitching wedge, and why? Well, yeah, because the histogram shape resembles a normal curve, and the area of each bar is roughly equal to the area under the normal curve for the same region. So the answer is going to be D.